Hey guys, welcome back. So I recently uploaded a video about creating a dynamic progress bar and later realized that it had some funny quirks to it and really only worked with specific health values that I was using. So I worked out a lot of the math and as you can see, this looks a lot more polished and I wanted to share this with you guys. So, all right, let's make a widget. I'm gonna right click here and we will call this new power up. We will open this guy up and we'll just drag in a progress bar anywhere you want and you can make it whatever size you want. That's one of the things I fixed. You don't need to worry about this size. It's going to be taken care of in later calculations. And we're going to make this percent all the way up to one and we will add one binding to this. Now we're going to need to get a reference to our player character. So we'll just drag off of here in the event graph. Let's say cast to third person. And we will get player character. And just right click here and make a reference. And then we can come into our binding. And here your player character should already be set up with um, a health variable that you can get and then a max health. This way you can divide the two and come up with a percent and that's what we will do. We will divide these and hook that up into here. So now we've created our binding and our widget is pretty much done. Now we're going to go into our player character or whatever blueprint you want to have this um, power up get scripted in. And the first thing we're going to do is create our widget. We will get player controller. And we will search here for our new power up. I guess it's new widget blueprint. Did I not rename? Yeah, new widget. Whatever. <coughs> and we'll right click here and create a reference power up widget and we will just add this to the viewport like so and then we're gonna need to create a bunch of uh, float variables for all of this math guys so bear with me first one that we're gonna do I'm gonna come over here we're gonna call this current scale And I'll explain these as we go along and um, need them. So we'll just hold Alt here. And we're going to run this off of a delay. 0.2 seconds I find works well. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be getting um, the widget geometry in a minute. And I have found that if you run it directly off of the sequence or anything like that, it um, hasn't drawn the widget yet, so you come up with zero. So that's what this delay here is for. So we're going to have our current scale, and we're going to make another variable, and we're going to call this scale increase. And this value we're going to set to our current scale. So right now our current scale will be defaulted to zero. We can compile this, and our scale increase is however much uh, percent you want the player's health or whatever stat to increase by. Uh, obviously as a decimal, so 0.1 is going to be 10%, and that's how much I'm going to have this um, health bar increase. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come into our widget here, and we're going to get our progress bar, and then we're going to get the cache geometry. And we're going to drag off of here and say local size. And this is what's going to tell us um, how big the progress bar was in the x direction, which is what we care about. And I'm going to uh, right click here and promote this to a variable. And I will call this original size. Now this value never changes no matter how large or small your progress bar gets. Um, it's always going to remember the first size that you built with the widget. 
but we're going to need that for later calculations, so we're going to save that right here. And then I'm going to create another variable called old size. And we're going to drag this out and hold Alt to set this. And we're going to set it to the original size. Now this variable we're actually going to change in the calculations, and it's going to keep track of the new size, basically, of this widget. So that's what that's going to be used for. And the last thing we're going to need to make is this uh, fudge factor that I found. It's just a conversion ratio. If I can spell. And we will drag this out and hold Alt. Now the thing I found you need to do with this is if you're going to have health um, that's anything other than 100, like for example here is 500, you're going to need to use a conversion ratio to get this all to work out. So we will get our max health, and we're just going to divide by a float, and you need to divide by 100. And we're going to plug that right into here, and that will be that. So now that we have these variables set up and ready to go, we can start scripting the uh, crazy math. So off of our L key or whatever event you're going to have fire this off, we're going to create another variable. And we're going to call this goal scale. And we'll drag that out, hold Alt, so that we can set it. And this is going to be the scale that we want our widget to end up once we've you know had a pickup or something. So that's going to be our current scale. We'll get that. And then we're going to add a float to it. And we're going to add 1. And the reason we're adding 1 is because if you scale something to 1, you've done nothing. You haven't changed anything. So remember, our current scale, we were setting back here to the scale increase, which was 0.1. So really, what our goal scale is going to be is 1.1 which would represent a 10% increase over whatever we started with. And from here, we're going to have a branch. And then we're going to want to check to see if we've reached our goal scale. So we can say less float. We'll look for this one. And we will hook this up like that. And then we're going to grab our goal scale and put it into the bottom one. And then we're going to right click here and promote this to another variable. And we will call this our loop scale count. And this is just going to keep track of how many times we've um, gone through the loop. But at the same time, it's going to keep track of the scaling that we're doing each time. So we're going to compile. And I'm going to set this to 1.05. And the reason for that is, again, 1 means you haven't scaled at all. And 0 0.05, this is from another fudge factor that we're going to be using a little bit later on. It just basically will indicate that we've gone through this loop once, um, right when we start. OK. Then we're going to get our widget. And out of here, we're going to get our progress bar. And now we're going to want to set the scale. And we're also going to want to set the translation. And we're going to be doing that each time through this loop. And we can split these structure pins right here. Now for the scale in the y direction, we want to make sure this is 1. We don't want to scale in the y direction. And for this Y translation, we don't have to worry about it. We're not moving the widget up and down. All right. So now we're going to get our loop scale count. And this is going to go directly into the scaling for the X. And then we're going to add this float to a float. And we're going to need to make another variable. So right click here, promote to variable. We'll call this scale iterator. 
this is one of the other fudge factors. We'll compile this, and this has to be set to 0 0.05. Again, I don't really know why these numbers work. If anybody has any ideas, please feel free to comment and let me know. All right, so now that we have that, we're also going to take off of our loop scale, and we're going to subtract. And from here, we're going to subtract 1. So for our loop scale, I've set this to 1.05. But really, what I want to know is how much it's changed each time through the loop. So again, scaling to 1 means you haven't changed anything. So that's why I'm subtracting this off of here, is to get rid of that um, the base 1, 1 to 1 scaling here. So our difference is 0.05. And that's what this value is going to represent here. And what I want to do with this is I'm going to divide this. And come here, say divide by float. <coughs> and what we're going to divide that by is this scale iterator, which is 0 0.05. And then we're going to take this. And we're going to multiply by float. And what we're going to multiply this by is our original size here. We're going to get that. And we're going to divide by float. And we're dividing our original size by 40. It's another weird number that I don't know why it works, but it does. And that's what we're going to plug into here and multiply these two together. And this is going to give us the amount that we need to translate our progress bar in the x direction for each run through the loop. All right. We're going to come off here um, from the false. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our old size and we're going to set that. So hold Alt. And what we want to do is set it to whatever our new um, value is. Because remember, the original size isn't going to change. But we want to know whatever this value is times our scale. So we're going to take our original size, and we're going to multiply by a float. And we're going to multiply this by our current scale here. So we can grab our current scale, plug that in. And then we will set that to our old size. So this is going to keep track of how large our progress bar is getting each run, each time we you know, get a pickup or something. And finally, we're going to set our current scale. So we can drag this out, hold Alt. And we want our current scale to increase by the amount that um, our pickup is supposed to increase the player's health. So this scale increase here that was 0.1, so we're going to grab that, hold control to get, and we're going to add float to a float. And we're going to add that to whatever our value is for the current scale. And then we can plug that into here. All right. Hopefully you guys are still with me. And the final piece of this is we're now going to set our um, <clears throat> loop scale count. So hold Alt here and connect that up like this. And we're going to set our loop scale count to this right here. So each time we go through, we're going to add the 0.5 fudge factor, this scale iterator. And that will increase our loop count all the way up until we get to goal scale. So we're setting that here. And then we actually want to change our player's max health. So we'll drag out and hold Alt. And this is going to keep the um, fill percent of the progress bar in the same location. So in order to change the player's health, we're going to get our max health, say get. and we're going to have one more little fudge factor here. So we'll create a variable. We'll call this bar 
to health units. And I found out that this needs to be set to five. And this is basically just, um, we'll get this here. And this is just keeping track of for um, every like unit you scale in the x direction, how many additional units of health will that progress bar be able to hold. So we're going to take our max health. We're going to add float to a float. And what we're going to add is this bar to health units. And this needs to be multiplied by our conversion factor right here. So we will get that. So any health that isn't um, starting off as a max of 100, you're going to need to use that conversion factor that we created earlier. So we will multiply these two here. And this will set up how many units of extra health um, the progress bar will be able to hold through each run. And we'll hook that up to our max health. And then finally, we're going to have this or needs to go through a delay. So that way it looks like it's filling up. I found 0 0.05 works for a lot of things. So you can put that in here for the delay. And we'll hook this back up to the branch. And we can hit compile, save, and we will test this out. So now if we hit play, you see where my cursor is, I'm keeping it on the edge of the bar. And you see as we keep hitting the L key, it fills up, but the player's health doesn't change. It just allows them to increase their health capacity. So if you get more health pickups, you'll be able to fill it up from here. But the their total health that they started with doesn't change. All right, guys, I hope you thought that was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.